What's going on guys is Pure Gamer here back again with another Dragon Ball Super episode number 64. I say back again with episode 64, but we are here for episode 64 of Dragon Ball Super. This is a review. I just uh, got finished watching the episode and for this uh, for today's video on um, on Dragon Ball Super, there's not really much that I can really talk about, but there is a few key points that I actually do kind of want to discuss a little bit if I can you know think shit off the top of my head and I'm, I'm eating gummy worms I'm sorry so I apologize for that but anyways the beginning of the episode of course starts off that like yo this happened in the last episode um Vegeta uh, was um Vegeta became so much more powerful than Goku Black had expected, and he was uh, caught off guard, basically. He was really caught off guard uh, when they started back up the fight, and that was, like, one of the key moments that was, that was at the end of the last episode. And that's where we actually get to see, like, how much Vegeta has really changed throughout the whole entirety of Dragon Ball in general. Yeah, I feel like Vegeta has one of the most, um, one of the most best character developments that I've seen and Dragon Ball in, in, a, in a long time, honestly. But then, of course, we continue on and stuff like that. Vegeta's still beating the shit out of Goku Black and stuff like that. And shit's just going fucking down. You know, they're fighting. Uh, uh, Vegeta's fighting Goku Black and Goku is in the middle of fighting Zamasu at, that, uh, at the current moment. And what happens is that basically, you know... Uh, Goku Black is like wondering in his head, like, how did he become so much stronger? I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense. I'm a god and you're immortal. This shouldn't be how it works, basically, right? And so what he does is that I'm gonna go ahead and pull a Geek to 101. His psionic blade, he ended up stabbing himself in his fucking hand with the psionic blade, and then he ended up turning it into a fucking staff, and then uh, he created like a fucking whatever whatever like in just like the whole space of the fucking universe right there and that created clones uh to fight goku and vegeta at that current moment but before we uh before we get to we get on to that really um you know goku and zamasu were fighting and of course because zamasu is immortal he's becoming very very careless and goku actually points that out he's be uh, he's all like yo just because you become more uh, immortal doesn't mean that you should be careless like the way that you are right now because something could uh, something could easily uh, catch you off guard and you won't even notice it which is um which is which is basically saying that like you know trunks um, is in the middle of trying to uh, trying I guess to learn as much as he can on how to use the uh, evil containment wave in the dub or Excuse me, or uh, the Mafuba in the Japanese version, of course. And uh, that's actually what ended up happening. Uh, Trunks somehow, in a matter of like a few minutes or so, end up learning how to end up learning how to use the Mafuba, and then he actually used the Mafuba successfully on uh, Zamasu, um, the one who's immortal. And I thought that was actually really surprising. I, uh, I didn't think that they were actually gonna do that but then they ended up doing that and i was i was really caught off guard with that but of course like every other fucking thing it doesn't end up working out so uh zamasu ends up getting out of the fucking like jar that they had set up for him and stuff like that and then it's like yo we gotta hurry up and stop playing around because these mortals are uh have more tricks up their sleeve than we had actually expected and so it was in that moment in time where they finally had decided to go ahead and do what they needed to do and what they did was be uh, is fusion and so then at that moment they had then became this is the most creative fucking name ever but black zamasu the fusion of the the patara fusion of both goku black who is uh, who is Zamasu in Goku's body, and Zamasu who had wished to become immortal. And already, that sounds like a very very powerful fusion, and it almost sounds like they can't even fucking win. Like there's not even a fucking chance that they'll be able to win. I beg to differ. 
I uh, I beg to I beg to differ. Honestly, I mean, I'm not saying they're gonna be able to kill him because there's uh, it's still the fusion of uh, Zamasu and Zamasu is immortal, so they're not gonna be able to kill him. But they are going to be able to do something, and this is obviously this is obviously foreshadowing that yo Goku and Vegeta are probably gonna have to fuse. But unless they wanna, but unless Toriyama wants to be that guy and not do that and make fucking Vegeta and Trunks fuse, that wouldn't be a big problem either. But honestly, I think everyone in the community would much rather uh, would much rather see either um, Vegeta or Gogeta. Me personally, I want to see uh, Gogeta because he's my favorite of the two fusions of uh, both Goku and Vegeta. But I wouldn't mind seeing Vegeta because. Uh, Vegeta is still really like badass character, and now, and now here begs the question: We know that the Batara fusion is far more superior and stronger than the fusion technique, the fusion dance, uh, as you can say. But my question is: Is that can they go Super Saiyan Blue? I wonder if they can actually go Super Saiyan Blue. I feel like the, they're gonna make him be able to go Super Saiyan Blue anyway. But even if they can't, even if they can't, I mean like. I mean, even if they don't do that, I mean, like, it's, it's a question of, like, can he actually, like, go Super Saiyan Blue? And, like I said, I feel like they're going to be able to do that anyway. Just because, like, both warriors of Goku and Vegeta know how to use um, the technique of how to basically turn into Super Saiyan Blue. So it's pretty much a no-brainer, you would think, right? But who knows? You never, you never really know with Toriyama now, so... I, I, I expect there to be um, the, uh, the Batara earring fusion just because um, the Supreme Kai, either either one of them, either one of their earrings will work. Um, both of the Supreme Kais from Universe 10 and Universe 7 uh, are there, so it's clearly hinting the fact that, yo, we're going to see Vegito again and Dragon Ball Super. And now, uh, do I have a problem with seeing fusion again? No, because we only really got to see fusion once and that just leads to more and more excitement to what's going to be happening on in the future and who knows we might even get uh, more fusion uh, in the near future for dragon ball super and i wouldn't be against it honestly but anyways uh i think i've i, I think i've ran uh, rambled on for long enough i really had like no idea what to really talk about because there's really nothing much to, for, uh, for me to say in uh, th uh, this week's episode Dragon Ball Super. It was pretty much saying that like, yo, Fusion's coming and uh, don't say that we didn't fucking tell you basically because we kind of did by for foreshadowing it every single other fucking minute basically. And so I think uh, I think next week uh, next week's episode is going to be um, a lot more like action packed and enjoyable considering the fact that we are going to probably see uh, Vegito back in uh, in Dragon Ball and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited to see um, uh, what's going to happen, you know, because as you know, in, in Dragon Ball in Dragon Ball Z in the Buu Saga. Vegeta was like being very arrogant and cocky about everything because of his power, and uh, that was just because he was toying with um, Buhan, as the community say, Buhan, because he was trying to basically get himself absorbed uh, so that way he can go in, uh, save uh, Gohan, Goten Trunks, and Piccolo, and all of them. And so maybe because this is Dragon Ball Super, and we're in a scenario where they're they're also going to be fighting another fused warrior who's basically immortal, I feel like if they were to go with uh, Vegito again, they're going to have to uh, become very, very serious with what they're doing. So I'm pretty excited for that, honestly. But anyways, like I said, I rambled on for long enough. If you guys enjoyed, uh, if you guys enjoyed what there was in this episode, be sure to uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Um, I will leave a link in the description to, um, to a website where you can legally... <laughs> watch Dragon Ball Super if you really want to. Uh, you can pay to where there's no ads or you can completely watch it for free still, but the only problem is there's gonna be ads. If you don't if you're not worried about the ads too much, then um, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But this is a website that you can go to so you can watch Dragon Ball Super with proper subtitles. It's legal. It's gonna support Toei animation and and, and the Kira Toriyama with his work and stuff like that. And that's mainly what the Dragon Ball community wants to do right now. They want to support Dragon Ball Super. 
but we also want a place where we can go watch Dragon Ball Super without getting in trouble, really. But yeah, anyways, like I said, if you guys enjoyed what there was in this video, uh, be sure to leave a like, and if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to content like this, and also future Dragon Ball Z Universe 2 videos in the near future, like I said. Anyways, this has been Pure Gamer. I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.